Hey folks, in today's video, Steph and I are going to talk you through and demonstrate my three favorite lenses for portraiture. I did a video like this in the past, but since then I've added one more to the lineup. Let's start by taking a look at the lenses. Taking a look at the three lenses we have here. First of all is an old favorite of mine, the 85-14G. This is a brilliant lens, it's been out for years, fantastic results, 85 is a classic portrait lens. Next up is the 105 f1.4. You can see how much bigger this is. It's bigger, it's more expensive, it's more complex, and lately it's been my go-to portrait lens. And finally is Nikon's latest 70-200. This is the f2.8 e lens. They reverse the focus and the zoom, which isn't my favorite, but again, such a flexible and versatile lens for portrait work. This video is brought to you by Companion Bags. Companion are handmade in Europe using naturally tanned German bull leather. I've checked out most of the quality leather bags on the market and these are by far my favorite. Top quality materials, beautiful design, details and workmanship. I personally use the Weekender, the Little Weekender and two of the Messenger bags. Check them out at the links in the description below. So all of these lenses perform perfectly fine in terms of autofocus. They're fast and accurate. Of the three, the 70 to 200 is certainly the fastest of the bunch, but for portrait shooting, the other two perform perfectly fine. You'll notice really contrasty lighting here. So essentially what we're looking at on these test shots is how is the background compression and out of focus areas looking. Okay folks, so that first shot was super contrasty, light and super windy and that was ruining her hair and my mic. So now let's do another shot here with the green diffuse background to see a, a different kind of bokeh. We had the city behind us, now just the greenery which is about two foot, three foot behind her. Again with each of the lenses wide open and we can do the 70 to 200 at different focal lengths to see how it performs. It's quite flat here though, so I probably will add in just a little touch of light. This is my current on-camera flash favorite. It's the Profoto A1. It's pretty expensive, but the mods are great for it and the recycle time is just fantastic. So let's have a shot. You can um, smile and enjoy this, like, or at least pretend you're enjoying it. There we go. Just think about your, your best friend's chain that I just smashed into pieces. He just told me this thing was indestructible. Oh, don't worry about it. Oh, it broke. What do you mean, don't worry about it? The first time I do anything! <laughs> it broke the Wow, I was ripping stuff with it. I guess I'm ah! a little too much already. What? I was <laughs> thinking tomorrow is Joey's birthday. Really? <laughs> okay. So something that's becoming apparent here, I haven't shot with the three of these side by side like this because I tend to take the one that is going to do the job. The 85, I do love it and in a lot of situations it works just great, but the 70 to 200 flexibility to be able to go further back and go in with the long lens to fill up the background, you know, really compress things down is so flexible. And in this particular shooting scenario where I've got a tree bouncing around a foot or two in front of her, then the greenery just behind, I'm finding I have to come really right down on top of her to try and get a nice filled up green background because if I go down low like I would with the 105, I'm getting too much of the building behind in the shot. And that presents an issue because you might only think of wide angle lenses of having any kind of distortion. Reality is 50 and 85, really every lens has some distortion. And if you want to get a tight headshot, in my opinion, 85 is not the most flattering for that. So let's head in studio and compare the three of them for a tight headshot. So look, all three of these lenses are going to do supremely well in this kind of situation. Shooting stop down a little, whether it's 2.8 or beyond, all of them perform fantastic. I will still shoot a series of them for you and show you the files so you can see the difference. But what I really want to show you here is the result you get at different focal lengths for a tight headshot. Now, a lot of people think 85 is the portrait length, right? But it still means if I want to get just a tight headshot, say just to the base of her neck to the top of her head, so a little bit below the base, basically this kind of a frame, I'm really quite close to her. 
and I'll let you be the judge, but in my opinion, that is not her real face shape. It's making her look rounder than she really is. There is still some distortion going on there. So I'll do the same shot with the 85, the 105, and then with the 70 to 200 at 135 and 200, and you tell me which one you think replicates her face best. So for my money, the 105 is already replicating her face better, just getting that much further back, you get rid of some of the barrel distortion. Now let's do the 70 to 200, and I'm gonna need to be right where you are. So let's put them up on screen one after the other. The 85, the 105, the 70 to 200 at 135, and here it is at 200 mil. Now let's try and squeeze them all side by side on screen so you can take a look. And what do you think? Which one is replicating her face best? Putting the 85 mil and the 200 side by side, it's pretty apparent that there is some distortion coming in at the 85 mil end. So if we're gonna talk about what is the best portrait lens, there's a lot of aspects to consider. Of course, image quality is really important in terms of sharpness and that kind of thing, but then so is how close you can work to someone and what distortion you're getting. So if you're shooting a tight headshot, I personally would rather shoot those at 200 mil. I think you get the naturalist reproduction, even though for general portraits like half body and stuff, 105, I absolutely love it. The other thing you wanna think about is, what's your working distance? If you're you know, shooting in a tight space, maybe you need to use an ultra wide lens. But think about if you're shooting a full body shot, if you're in a studio working with a photographer and they're right the way across the room having to shout instructions at you, it's not as nice of a working environment if you're say eight to 12 feet away and you can actually maintain a conversation. So your focal length is going to play a role in that as well. The last thing, and I know so many people for portraits are all about the bokeh or how the background looks. Let's go down to the promenade and shoot some half body and full body shots and see how much of the background we can make disappear with each of these lenses. So we just stepped out into the shadow to get some quick different test shots here with each of the lenses. Let us know as a comment which of the different focal lengths you prefer you always have to consider the actual frame you're shooting when you're choosing your lens selection. Here, the 70 to 200 was much better equipped to clean up that background at 200 mil than the 85 or 105. Now, you're probably getting the impression, and you'd be right, that I absolutely love the 105. The way it blows out the background is phenomenal, but, it's hard to get past the amazing ability of a zoom lens to clean up the background. Here, I've got kind of a nice background, but then there's all different branches and greenery there. And at 105, unless I really want to come in tight on her, which I don't, because I want the outfit, and if I come too close, I'm going to get distortion from the perspective. If I go to the 200, step back, zoom in, I should be able to get just the nice blown out background on the green trees, even though it won't be quite as soft, it'll be non-distracting, so let's try that. So at 70 mil, lots of clutter. Going in at 200, hands up again. I can really fill up the background in a way that just wouldn't be possible with the 85 or 105. Okay, folks, so it's always fun shooting with Steph. If you wanna check out some other fun content we recently put out, jump on over to the Bootcamp page, Photography Bootcamp parody video. It's a bit silly, but I think you'll really enjoy it. Now, in terms of these three lenses, was there one that really stood out to you that you liked shooting with the most? 85s are classic portrait lenses for good reason. I think for anything other than really tight headshots, it's a great option if you're doing half body or full body, great, and you're gonna be far enough back that you're not gonna to see too much distortion there. This is the cheapest of the three, but still expensive at $1,600, but there are 1.8 variants out there that offer much better value. The 105, I've found myself shooting with this a lot lately. Now, this was just a really quick series of tests, but let me show you some of the other shots I've taken with this over time. It's razor sharp where you want it and the background just falls away to oblivion. I really like the results I get with this. 
But if you're only looking to get one, the 70 to 200 is really hard to go past. The focal length is so flexible and it's a classic for good reason. It gives you both of these focal lengths and every other increment from 70 to 200. And it's the only one that has image stabilization and it works really well. It also focuses faster. And for a lot of portraiture, even most, the 2.8 is going to be fast enough and going to give you a nice fall off, a really nice fall off for your out of focus areas. If you're in super low light or you really want to obliterate the background, then sure, a 1.4 is a great option. It gives you four times the amount of light to play with and that extra buttery background. But overall, this is a really great option. But this is the most expensive of the three. The latest E variant from Nikon is like $2,800. Canon has new ones coming out. Their lenses are great too. And Tamron has some options that are much better value. I'll pop links to all of that in the description below. But not overall a budget-friendly lineup of portrait lenses. If you'd like to see some more budget-friendly comparisons, then please do let me know. Otherwise, let me know which of these you most preferred. And if you head on over to the website and sign up to my mailing list, I'll send you out a free copy of my guide to improving your portraiture. Thanks guys, I'll see you soon.